Storms continue in Colorado tonight. Some places in the metro got hammered by hail today. Others turned into rivers in the streets. That's video from Parker this afternoon where hail piled up high enough. It looked like snow on the ground in Aurora. Hail covered the ground at Saddle Rock Golf Course today. You're looking at the ninth hole. Couldn't see it the fairway or the green this hour at this afternoon. We're also covering a house fire out in Parker tonight. Firefighters say it started with a lightning strike. We have a crew live on scene. We'll check in with them in just a minute. Thanks for watching. I'm Jennifer Meckles. Another stormy day across Colorado. Let's get straight to Corey Reppenhagen now with a look at your forecast. More today, Corey, more tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to have to reload and do this all over again to, uh, for tomorrow. But this entire weekend, some hard hitting storms out there, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. The storms are starting to diminish here on the radar now. We do still have some thunderstorm activity down to our south. No more severe thunderstorm warnings, but we do have some heavy rain down the I-25 South Corridor, and there is still a flash flood warning until later on tonight, until about 1130 here in Pueblo County, and that does include the city of Pueblo. But here in the uh, Front Range area, even the showers up in the high country that have been using the lift of the terrain to maintain themselves are starting to diminish for tonight. So we'll clear it out for tonight, reload, do it again tomorrow. Here in Denver, we didn't get too much action right here in the city, uh, Elitch Gardens and Nine News downtown, 63 degrees right now. This dew points are pretty high, so it's gonna be a muggy night and that'll help moderate the temperatures. We probably won't drop too much uh, more than a couple of two or three degrees as we go through the night here, bottoming, bottoming out at about 60 degrees. No more rain showers or thunderstorm activity tonight, but like we've been talking about one more day coming up here on Monday where we'll be talking about severe weather in the Denver metro area and I'll outline the details on that coming up in the forecast. Corey, thank you. Tonight, crews spent hours working a house fire in Douglas County. South Metro Fire said the initial report came in as a lightning strike, then smoke coming from the attic. It started just after six tonight on running Fox Way in Parker. That's where Nine News reporter Rachel Kraus joins us live tonight. They've just wrapped up, Rachel. We've got some updates. Yeah, just in the last 30 minutes or so, a lot of those fire trucks, firefighters, first responders, for the most part, they've all headed home. It's a very different picture from what we saw out here just a few hours ago. Now, South Metro says their crews were first called out to the house fire around 6 o'clock in the evening. Their first 911 call came from the homeowners themselves. They said their house had been struck by lightning, and soon after, smoke filled the attic. Now, luckily, they were able to get out in time, and no one was hurt. When South Metro arrived, the attic was engulfed in flames and part of the roof had collapsed. South Metro tells me it took about an hour to get that fire under control, but the location and the weather today made this one a tricky fire to fight. Getting ground ladders to where they need to be safely, especially when the, the ground is really wet, um, it can just add some you know, fall hazards and things like that. So just in general, it's a hazardous incident. Certainly when firefighters arrived, we were still in the middle of a severe thunderstorm warning and a flash flood warning that were simultaneously occurring here. So yeah, kind of a hazardous afternoon for the folks here. Now, South Metro says this is the third home just today that was hit by lightning. As for the other two homes, both of those are doing just fine. As for this home, after a few hours of fighting that fire, South Metro was able to get most of those fires out and those hotspots put out here earlier this evening. They are planning on keeping a crew out here, keeping an eye to make sure that any remaining flames and hotspots aren't able to pop up here overnight. Reporting live in Douglas County, Rachel Krause, 9 News. And where Rachel is in Douglas County took the brunt. We had thousands of lightning strikes across the state today. Douglas County was like the worst of it all. Rachel, thank you for your reporting. It was another deadly weekend on Colorado's waterways. A rafter died after their boat capsized on the Roaring Fork River yesterday. The Pitkin County Sheriff's Office says they actually pulled two people from the water. 74-year-old Villas Siggers was one of them. He later died at a hospital. The other person who was rescued was treated at the scene and survived. Tonight, investigators are looking for a missing indigenous teenager, 15-year-old Moni Sespooch, last seen in Ignacio in La Plata County in southwest Colorado. This was last night around 11 o'clock. Sespooch has brown hair, brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a white crop top, blue jeans, and a black jacket. If you have any information, please contact CBI. Something, not clear what, but something crashed down into a family's windshield this past week as they were driving on a major Colorado interstate. Tonight, police are investigating whether this was an accident or a crime. 
The family says they were driving northbound on I-25 near the Colorado Boulevard and Evans Avenue bridges, somewhere between there when this happened. Rebecca wasn't in the car, but it was her kids and her parents. Her parents were driving. She says something fell through their windshield, which later shattered. They think it was a rock based on the shape of the damage. Nobody got hurt, but they're pretty shaken up. Rebecca didn't want to share her name, but she says she does not believe this is an accident. Thankfully, the windshield withheld the impact. If the, if the rock or bullet, whatever it was, would have gone in, it would have killed my daughter. If I hit the front windshield, it would have killed my father or he would have lost control of the car. What if the windshield had um, collapsed while they were still driving? In that case, my two daughters in the back seat would have had to go to the hospital for stitches. Rebecca plans to get the windshield replaced next weekend and has filed a police report with Denver police. This comes at a time we're following a very high profile criminal case out of Jefferson County. It's been a little over a year since a rock thrown at a windshield killed a woman in Arvada. Prosecutors say in April of last year, three teenagers threw rocks at a whole bunch of cars near Rocky Flats. The driver of one of those cars, Alexa Bartell, died when a rock hit her. Two of the suspects have pleaded guilty in this case. The other has a trial set for next month. It took dozens of firefighters to knock down a fire overnight at a factory that makes glass bottles for Miller and Coors. This happened just before one o'clock in the morning at the factory off Miller Street and West 50th Avenue, right at the Wheat Ridge Arvada line. Firefighters say a malfunction of some kind caused hot liquid gas, glass, excuse me, to spill in that facility causing smoke and fire. Our Fire says it took them hours to get this out and conditions are really tough. They had to switch out crews, give them time to rest and hydrate. Everyone made it out of that fire safely. Tomorrow, Denver City Council is going to consider a $1 million contract to help people experiencing homelessness, specifically with mental health and addiction. This contract could help provide more staffing for the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. The nonprofit says mental health needs are now outpacing what staff can handle. The city's proposal also includes technology updates and staff training. If this gets approved, the coalition says that money could help hundreds of people experiencing homelessness. Uh, all of our properties where we house individuals, we are seeing that more and more people have higher needs than we have staff to address. Um, and I think a lot of that is just because throughout the community, we're seeing that there are many more uh, mental health needs than, than the community is able to provide for. And that's the same thing is happening in our properties. And so, you know, four years ago, the staffing model might have been appropriate for the, for the level of needs at the time. And because those needs have increased, we have to adjust and, and identify uh, resources for that. City Council is expected to make a final decision tomorrow, and the Denver Department of Health expects that will go through. Today, loved ones honored the life of a beloved performer who died of cancer this week. Janelle St. Christopher has been an influential figure in the Denver LGBTQ community for decades. There was a ceremony in her honor scheduled for today. Janelle won Miss Gay Pride of Colorado back in 1995, made it her mission to spread love and acceptance to the whole community. She raised thousands of dollars for local charities through drag shows. We've lost a huge part of what we are about, what we stand for, um, what we have been the face for. But the one thing that Janelle did leave us is a avenue for us to continue to grow on what she's already helped to build. Janelle was 53 years old. Last week, we shared a longer story about Janelle's life and legacy. You can find that on 9news.com. Not all gender affirming care requires a trip to the doctor. A salon in Denver is now offering special services for teenagers for free. Above Ground Salon, that's in downtown Denver, and they're offering free haircuts to anyone under 21. Ash Bowen started this salon years ago after experiencing the struggles of being an LGBTQ kid. Thinking of myself at that age and remembering how isolated I felt and knowing that these kids don't have to feel that way anymore, you know. This offer is not just for Pride Month. Bowen says they'll offer year-round. The deal is just for your first gender-affirming haircut. They're also planning to set up a clothing swap sometime in the near future. Tonight, a critical highway in Wyoming is closed. State officials say there was a catastrophic failure on this road. Teton Pass, it connects Jackson, Wyoming to eastern Idaho. On Thursday, there was a crack on both lanes of the pass. That ended up dropping about eight inches. Crews patched it up, reopened the road, but then Friday a mudslide came down, took out the whole road. 
Geologists are now trying to come up with a plan to rebuild this road. Wyoming leaders do not yet know when that can happen. And detours can be an hour or longer. In Florida, officials are warning beachgoers after three people were injured in two separate shark attacks. This is on Friday, just within two hours of each other, less than five minutes apart. Bad day on Friday. Officials are using special flags now to warn people of moderate surf hazards and the dangers of marine life.